Here's an example of morphological comparison of different ty types of hominid skulls. The first one here is the chimpanzee. The last one over here is us, Homo sapiens. These skulls in between represent various stages in the evolution of humans. Now to an untrained eye, all these skulls might look exactly the same, but if you look really closely, the ridges above the eyes and the eye sockets themselves are much different in the chimpanzee here than in the humans. And by comparing really down to the very, very fine details, we can tell a lot of things about the evolution of not just human life or human uh, development or human evolution, we can tell a lot about the evolution of any organism that, provide, that leaves fossils behind, simply by exploring its bones and its hard parts. Another way is to look at its biochemistry. What kinds of chemicals do we find? In this example, here we have a particular enzyme from bacteria. This is a cytochrome oxidase enzyme. It's part of an electron transport chain that involves and generates adenosine triphosphate, and that's not so important, but take a look at the similarities with this same enzyme, this same cytochrome oxidase, oxidase in a cow. The colored parts are the regions of the molecule that they have in common. The gray areas are things that the cow have added on to their molecule. But the similarity between these two enzymes is striking, and the fact that they perform the same functions is also a testament to the fact that life it, once it solves a problem, can continually use that particular approach to solving a problem. In this case, how are you going to get energy to cells? Again, a bacterium and a cow. Similar enzymes. Really, really remarkable. We can also look at stages of development. Here we have a fish, a chicken, a pig, and a human. And what we see in these stages of development are very similar kinds of things, like development of the eye spot at different um, stages of development. Development of a tail. We actually sometimes see tails in humans, um, tails in the pig uh, embryo, tails in the chicken embryos, and finally the development of the fetus itself. But by looking at these different stages, we actually get some kind of idea of how the genetic toolbox is being changed to solve different problems and to add complexity to different kinds of organisms. Again, the main point being that by comparing developmental sequences or any of the other ones that we've looked at, we see common features in all of life. The final way, the sort of modern way of doing it, is simply to compare the genetic code or the genomes. Now, all of us in our cells have essentially software that runs our cells and tells them what to do. It's software that codes for hair color, eye color, behavior patterns, all sorts of different things. And that genetic code can be read and compared with other organisms. Well, we can do that with all forms of life. And when we do so, we can produce a type of tree, what's called a phylogenetic tree, to look at the relatedness between different organisms. Here we have a phylogenetic tree for different kinds of echinoderms, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, brittle stars, sea stars, and feather stars, all of which are related to each other in different ways. And here we find that sea stars and brittle stars are more closely related to each other than sea stars and brittle stars with sea urchins or sea cucumbers. We might also, in a different kind of tree, find that maybe the, each of them evolved independently in different ways, but we know they all evolved from a common ancestor. One point I want to make about this is that these types of phylogenetic trees and these comparisons, whether it's biochemical, morphological, uh, developmental, or even genetic, they're never static. As we improve our methods and as we gather more data about organisms, we may change the phylogenetic tree. But the key is that all these different kinds of evidence point to life having a common ancestor, life having originated from a very similar kind of organism everywhere on Earth. That's remarkable.